Welcome to church today, everybody. We are trying very hard to keep uh, six feet apart. So let's see. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, we got more than six feet. We're, uh, we're nearly seven feet apart. So right. this is good. Good, good, good us. Good us. It's and good. We, got and we'll Joe, we don't have to keep six feet away from you, Papa Joe. He's uh, <laughs> joining us in an undisclosed location. Again, uh, right. following CDC recommendations for his health as well. And uh, we, seriously, we've been trying to follow the best recommendations and best practices from the beginning of all this. We'll continue to do so at each opportunity. We want to invite you and encourage you to follow those recommendations to help keep each other safe. It's a good way to love like Jesus during these times. Very good. Papa Joe, yes, sir. tell us about, uh, as we're watching, what, what are some things we can do? Uh, how can we do more than just passively watch as though this is well, a TV show or something? It's a, it's a great opportunity to, uh, to use Facebook and, uh, and, and uh, YouTube Premiere um, uh, for the way that they're uh, designed. We can... Uh, not only passively watch the worship service, but I'm reminded of something Pastor John said uh, last week after worship on Facebook, um, the different comments that were received. Um, he said it almost felt like being in church together because uh, pleasantries are exchanged. Hey, how you doing? How's everybody feeling? You keeping safe? But also uh, upon different points where uh, the message really struck home, there's a, a amen added to the to the comments or a hallelujah and so as we have our time together today we we don't have to just sit and watch but we can we can interact with one another and it, and it really takes it to the next level it's it's a it's a great opportunity to use this technology that the lord's blessed us with and so uh take every opportunity today if you have a prayer request um if you want to just add something an insight over uh uh, something that the Lord touched your heart through the message or the worship today, uh, feel free to go ahead and, and uh, enter your comments in the proper uh, place, and uh, it, it'll be responded to. Uh, we're listening to you, and we, and we want to interact. We want to we wanna make sure that as we're one body in Christ, uh, that, we, that we feel like one body in Christ. So let's, uh, let's try to uh, experience what Pastor John experienced last week, and and uh, reach out and touch one another. So really what you're saying is we can do the same thing as best we can in the online experience as we do when we gather in person on a typical Sunday morning, and that is interact with the people we're worshiping with, not just receiving whatever's coming from the stage. Yeah, amen, amen. amen. Here's one thing. You could go to the comment section right now and test it out simply by giving this prayer of thanksgiving. Maybe it's the first time you've ever uttered these words, but type in, thank God for technology. <laughs> I don't know that my fingers can take that. Or thank you, Lord, for being with us or whatever, whatever fits your heart right now. Uh, Jason, uh, everything stopped, but the bills keep coming. That's not a surprise. That's true for you, too. So if one wanted to give, uh, what's uh, some ways they can do that right now? Would you share with us? Another thank God for technology moment. You can go to our web page. might be the easiest way. And there's a prominent button right near the top that you can click on. And in a moment, be able to, to contribute uh, to the mission of Jesus Christ in northern Michigan and around the world from our three campuses and now hundreds of locations. In fact, uh, I've got it pulled up right now. And... Just with that button, I gave money to the church and the cause of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jason. Oops, I, I just did it again. Um, Jason. Wait. <laughs> How do you get off of this page? <laughs> I'm not telling. Just keep giving. <laughs> it, it's all right. It's Pastor Jeff's phone. We're good. <laughs> we also have a TV guide up now. Pastor Brant's done a nice job of all the times we're going to be available on our website, on Facebook, um, at YouTube so that you can be following us each and every day. We want to be connecting with you all uh, week long, not just on Sundays. Uh, Pastor Joe, before we begin, offer up a prayer uh, as uh, we're about to worship together in song. Uh, ask God's blessing on our service, would you? I definitely would like to. Well, Heavenly Lord, we thank you for the awesome gift of worship. Father, we've uh, been invited into your presence, Lord, and while it's different than what we might be used to, 
Lord, we know that it's just as effective when our hearts are turned to you. And so, Lord, we lift up what's being done today in worship, the, the praise music, Lord, the songs that are sung, Lord, Pastor Jeff's message as he uh, preaches your word. We pray a blessing upon it that it would return to you as a sweet savor. And Lord, we pray for those who maybe haven't even been part of a worship service yet. They're just tuning in because of uh, of their confinement to home. But Lord, whatever the reason that we're tuning in today, we pray a full measure of your Holy Spirit, Lord, to touch your children. Lord, your children are seeking after you. We pray that you would be found. And we thank you for joining us together as your body. Lord, revealing yet once again why church is so important. And so be with us throughout the worship time and in the coming days, Lord, we'll turn to you with thanksgiving and gratitude always for what it is that you've done and continue to do. And not only that, what you promised to do, Lord, because we gather now and turn our hearts to you in the precious name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and all of God's people uh, gathered today in different locations, unite their hearts as we say a hearty amen. amen. And now we invite you to continue interacting with the rest of our church family. But most of all, worship the Savior who deserves all that we have. Hey, well, good morning, everyone. Once again, welcome to online church as it is, as we know it. And uh, we're glad you're able to join us this morning and uh, in singing to the Lord. And there'll be some lyrics on the screen this week for you, so you'll be able to follow along a little bit better for those of you who don't know the songs by heart. So. So yeah, join with us in your living room. I encourage you to sing loud. Uh, nobody's around you, so feel free to just let it rip and praise the Lord and glorify Him today.
so glad that you're able to join us once again if you're just tuning in to our Facebook live premiere of this week's service we're glad that you're able to join us and we pray all is well in your home and you're all safe and I just want to encourage you to you know leave a comment in the comment section or like or share um, the feed today if you know how to do that just click on the share button and you can share it to all your friends and family maybe there's a lot of people that you know on Facebook or in other social medias that don't know the Lord, that don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So this is one way of doing that. It's really easy to do that. But um, I want to encourage you to do that. And uh, we're going to continue to worship with uh, some awesome friends here today, Josh and, and uh, Cheryl and Britt. It's good to have you all.
this morning, Lord, you lead us in your love, Lord. There's nothing
us right now, Lord, wherever we are, Lord, you're very present. We can call on your name, Lord. Your name is a strong tower, Lord, that we run to and we're safe, Lord.
Bury a cross as you wait for the crown Tell the world of the treasure you found your presence, Lord, would cheer us on and guide us, Lord. Sing with me. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not Hey church, uh, welcome to our online service. We're so glad you guys are worshiping with us wherever you're at. And uh, we've been praying for you and we believe that even in this time that we're socially distant, we could be spiritually present. Um, and so we are praying that today uh, is still a powerful experience for you as you meet with the Lord. Hey, I just wanted to give you three things to, to remember as this week goes on. Uh, first of which is uh, you can always submit prayer requests on our church website. We don't want to be so distant from each other that we're disconnected, especially on a spiritual level. So I would encourage you to check out walloonchurch.com slash prayer to submit any prayer requests, whether it's a private one that you don't want anyone to know about, or you can put a public one that you want to go out on our prayer chain, um, walloonchurch.com slash prayer. 
Speaking of which, our staff is uh, still here, even though all of our programs here on campus are canceled. Our staff is still here to meet your spiritual needs. So if there's something that you're really needing to talk about or whatever, we're still here. So just give us a call. Call the office. Uh, the phone number is going to be right here on the screen, and we'd love to hear from you. And finally, I just want to make this uh, pretty apparent. Obviously, as, as things are happening at a, at a rapid rate around this world as far as the coronavirus is concerned and legislation surrounding that. Lots of things are shutting down and we can't meet with you in person. We want to encourage you, uh, we still want to be able to preach the gospel literally around the world on a digital platform like this and you can be a part of that. You can be a part of that not only by sharing this video, by, by encouraging your friends uh, with scripture and praying together, but you can be a part of the mission of Jesus on the move in his church by giving online to our church. Uh, simply head to wallinchurch.com slash giving and you can donate to be a part of what God is doing here in this church. And I will just say, we would crave that because we still would love to be able to have the resources to consistently preach the gospel around the world, even in a time where we're not able to meet physically. Um, and so you can be a part of that. Head to wallinchurch.com slash giving. There's also a quick link right on our web page homepage. Welcome to church, March 29th, 2020. And uh, we are still adjusting to this new normal and uh, preaching once again to an empty auditorium. But that's okay. It's good for uh, old dogs to learn some new tricks. It's been quite a week, hasn't it? Uh, Rich Birch said, it's been a week filled with volatility, uncertainty, and change. And uh, he made the point that the fear of the unknown is actually our greatest fear. And there's a whole lot of things that we just don't know. They're unknown at this point. We are in week number two in Choose Your Character, where we explore some of the very real people who walked with Jesus in the book of John. Today, we're going to examine a man uh, who faced a lot of volatility, a lot of uncertainty, and a lot of change. And at least for him, that created a season of doubt, uh, a time of great uncertainty. And I suspect that many of you here today can identify with that. Uh, you're experiencing, even right now, a, a season of doubt, a time of great uncertainty, and uh, that's why it's appropriate that today uh, we're looking at him. If you are here with me in person right now, I'd invite you locate on your phone or in your Bible the 20th chapter of John's Gospel. And uh, if you are here right now, I would ask you if you're able, would you stand right now? This might be time for a good stretch there at home. Uh, let's stand, and you can read right out loud with me if, if you're willing. And we're going to read about the man whose name has become synonymous with doubt and uncertainty. Any guesses? Who, who's the one, who's the man who has become synonymous? He's known, th this is the man known for doubt and uncertainty. That's right, Thomas, the doubting disciple. We're going to read beginning in verse 24, John chapter 20. We'll put it up on the screen for you. Again, if, if you're willing, read with me. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand in his, into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Through the door, though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you've seen me, you've believed. Blessed are those who've not seen and yet have believed. Let's, uh, 
Let's pray together. Lord, I, I suspect that there are many watching right now who can identify with Thomas in his time of uncertainty and all of the unknowns that created in him a season of doubt. I pray for each person watching right now who is in the valley of the shadow of doubt. Lord, might your word bring peace and grace and comfort today. Lord, as we dig in and examine Thomas and how he dealt with doubt, Lord, I, I'm asking that your words that you inspire John to write down, I'm praying, Lord, that they might speak and nudge and teach and, and encourage and correct us, Lord. So I pray that your word uh, might be welcome today. We invite the third person of the Trinity to take charge of these weak and goofy lips, Lord. We ask that your word and your spirit might be alive here right now uh, in this room, but especially, Lord, alive in, in each and every place where people are watching. Lord, we say this every Sunday. We say it one more time. All the church family of Walloon Lake and East Jordan and Lanson Northridge and all of those watching all over said with one united voice. Did you say it loud? <laughs> Amen. And if you stood with me, you can, you can be seated. If not, uh, remain seated. <laughs> okay, the context is important here. To understand what the situation is that led Thomas to this valley of the shadow of doubt is really important. So you need to understand what's going on that led him to the valley of the shadow of doubt. Jesus has already been betrayed by Judas Iscariot for 20 pieces of silver, okay? Uh, Jesus has been arrested by a company of soldiers, John 18, verses 1 to 12. Jesus has been taken before the high priest and the Jewish leaders, John 18, 12 to 14. Jesus has already appeared before Pontius Pilate, uh, John 18, 28 to 40. Jesus has been flogged and beaten by Roman soldiers, Pontius Pilate gave them that order, John 19, 1 to 3. And Jesus has already been placed on a Roman cross, placed between two thieves, two criminals, while his mother and the women watched in horror, John 19, 7, 17 through 27. Now, Jesus has already uttered these words, it is finished. And he died on that Roman cross. And the soldiers pierced his side just to make sure that he was really dead. Uh, John 19, 26 to 37. Now here's the point. From Thomas's perspective, his life was over. <laughs> everything that he was hopeful for, everything that he was excited about, that ended with Jesus dead on that cross and buried in the tomb. And Thomas, I believe, was pretty sure that he was next. He and the other 11 disciples, they were the ones that the Jewish leaders were going to come for. I'm sure Thomas is thinking, I'm going to have the nails in my feet, the nails in my wrists, Roman spikes are coming my way. Again, my life is over. Everything he'd enjoyed for the last three years was gone. <laughs> and in his mind, it's never coming back. All the hope, all the excitement, all the joy. His future literally had vanished, spiraling downward into the valley of the shadow of doubt. Now, let's pick up that story. We just read this a few uh, moments ago. John chapter 20 Verses 24 and 25. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told Thomas, we've seen the Lord. <laughs> but he said to them, well, well, that's nice, but unless I see the nail marks in his hands, put my finger where the nails were, put my hand into his side, 
I will not believe. Now, we're not told where Thomas was uh, when Jesus appeared to the other ten disciples. You understand, Judas had already went out and hung himself, so there were eleven now. Uh, I don't know where Thomas was. It doesn't say, but when Jesus appeared alive, literally bodily, physically risen from the dead on Easter Sunday evening, uh, Thomas wasn't there. Good practical lesson for us. Here, here's the lesson. When we're not meeting together regularly with God's people, when we're not gathering regularly with God's people, that's a place where doubt grows. When we're not able to gather with God's people, and that's why we're talking about this especially today, that's where doubt grows when you're not able to gather with God's people, the church. Ephesians 1 verse 23 tells us, the church is the body of Jesus. The church is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. So, uh, Thomas is going to say, you know what, I wasn't there, I need to see the body of Christ. I need to touch and be near Jesus in order to believe. Okay? Today, we, we touch and see and feel the body of Christ through His church. You understanding? In other words, Ephesians 1.23, the church is the body of Christ. It's through the church of Christ that we can feel and experience the encouragement, the, the uh, uplifting touch of the, of the body of Christ. We need family members to help us believe. You understand? That's why there is such a thing as church. We need the church to encourage and remind us why we believe. Now, right now, that's a challenge. <laughs> right, right now, uh, you know, we've been quarantined here in Michigan, and we can't gather together in person right now, which is why every day here at, at uh, Walloon and East Jordan and Lansing Northridge, every day we're sending you on the website, on Facebook, uh, on YouTube, prayer and scripture and encouragement. And uh, I'd encourage you, go to walloonchurch.com or look us up on Facebook, walloonchurch.com or on YouTube, the same. Again, that's why we're, we're posting every day so we can bring some encouragement to you. But I would argue that's not enough. Uh, we, we need to keep loving and touching and, and, and encouraging one another. So, so who are the people that you can text or you can FaceTime, or as Pastor Jason said uh, yesterday on, on his talk, uh, you can actually use the phone for what it was mainly designed for, to actually call somebody and talk to them and encourage them, somebody you care about. Reach out to someone who you know is struggling right now. Maybe somebody you know is living alone. This would be a tough time, and we're praying especially for you. In tough situations, we really need the body of Christ. We need one another in the family to step up and love on each other. So here's my question. Who around me needs a text? Who around me needs a phone call? Who around me right now could use some FaceTime or a Skype? Lord, make it clear because right now, if you'll show me who around me could use uh, me to reach out in love, I I'm willing. Because most of us have more time right now than we've had in years. Isn't that true? Uh, we're, we're, we're looking for things to do. Why not use this slower time to reach out and care for someone around you? Uh, let them know you love them. Pray for each other on the phone. Uh, may, maybe take them over some groceries. We, we heard yesterday at staff meeting, there's people already 
who, who aren't eating well? Who around you could use some toilet paper or something? You know, okay, I can't go in, but I could leave it on the steps. Uh, what can we do practically to show love and good works to my fellow members of the body? Or even better, what about those folks who aren't a, pa- a part of the body of Christ? Best I know, they don't have a personal relationship with Jesus. I'm going to reach out and show them love and good works as well. Okay, a week later, Jesus shows up at the same house. Uh, uh, Easter Sunday evening, he shows up to 10, and now a week later, it's interesting, Thomas is there this time. He's not going to miss it this time. Uh, Seems this is the house they've been hiding out in, if you will. And Thomas, again, I'm demanding proof. I need eyewitness proof to believe. I need to touch Jesus myself to know that he was alive and risen from the dead. And before we read, starting in verse 26, I'm pleased to report that Jesus is so patient and kind with Tom the doubter. Verse 26, a week later, his disciples were in the house again, And Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand. Put it into my side. Thomas, stop doubting and believe. Now just pause. Christ could have taken great offense right here. He had just taken on the sin of all of his disciples and all of his followers throughout all of history. He he just passed through hell, literally, to save them. And now, uh, I, I don't believe. I'm doubting this. But note, again, Jesus is so patient and so kind to this doubter named Tom. I've got great news I really do. Here's the great news for those of you who are watching right now. Hebrews 13.8 tells us this truth. Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, forever. So he was patient with Thomas. Here's the point. Jesus is still patient with doubters in 2020 who are going through volatile, challenging, really confusing situations. He he says, it's okay, Thomas. Put your fingers in my hands and my feet, Tom. Come and touch my side that's been pierced by a soldier's spear. Thomas, it's time to stop doubting and believe. Thomas, you're near me now. You're now with the body. You're now with your Savior. It's time to stop doubting and believe. I think songwriter Chris Rice puts it well. He's got this recipe for doubt down. It's the untitled hymn. Kind of a strange title for a song, but it's one of my favorites. And here's the recipe for doubt. Doubt. Run to Jesus, run to Jesus, run to Jesus, and live. (laughs) That'd be my encouragement. Why why don't you take a moment, if if you have a a smartphone or on your computer, go to Spotify, go to iTunes, uh, and download song by Chris Rice, Untitled Hymn. I think it'll encourage you because that, that'll be a good reminder. We're going to keep running to Jesus, and today we're going to keep running to one another, the body of Christ today. Now, interestingly, it's not recorded that Thomas actually ever touched the hands and the feet and the side of Jesus. Don't you think that's interesting? I do. Uh, instead, Once Thomas is convinced, yep, that's Jesus, he declares with his lips one of the greatest professions of faith in all of the Bible. (laughs) This 
This is fantastic. Uh, finally, he sees who's before him. It really is Jesus. Here's what Thomas said to Jesus, verse 28. My Lord and my God. <laughs> my Lord and my God. My, my Lord, my King, my Ruler, my God. The kingship and the divinity or the godness of Jesus Christ is the core of what it means to be a follower and one of the kids of Jesus Christ. You understand? To, to make him king and acknowledge his divinity, he's the second person of the Trinity, that's what it means to be a follower of King Jesus. Okay, Jesus, you're my king, you're my Lord. Literally what it means, you're my master. Take charge of my life, rule and reign over these bones right now. And Jesus, you're my God. I recognize who you are. You're my creator. Colossians 1 makes clear. Jesus, you're my savior. You're the second person of the Trinity. That's what it means, that declaration, my Lord and my God. And that's what Thomas does when he realizes that's Jesus right in front of him. Here's my question. Have you confessed with your mouth and believed in your heart that Jesus Christ is your Lord and your God? I'm convinced this is the most critical, this is the most important question in life. Have you personally confessed with your mouth and believed in your heart, just like Doubting Thomas does here, that Jesus Christ is your Lord and your God? Have you done that? Your mama or your grandma can't do that for you. Your, your spouse can't. Your, your children, you have to personally confess. Yes, Jesus, you are my Lord, my master, my king. And Jesus, you're my God. Take charge of these bones. Now, maybe you have thought you need to have every question answered before you'll believe in Jesus and declare it with your mouth. So maybe you've been waiting to make that declaration because you've still got some doubts and you've got some questions. Well, I would like to point to uh, Mark chapter 9 because in Mark 9, there's a father who's desperate to get to Jesus. And he comes running to Jesus because his son is about to die. His son is controlled by a demonic power that prevents him from speaking, keeps throwing him down to the ground, uh, it, it's throwing him into fires, throwing him into water, <coughs> attempting to kill him. Father says to Jesus in Mark chapter 9, verse 22, if you can please save my boy, if, if Jesus you could save my boy, and Jesus replies, if, if, hey, everything is possible for the one who believes. I, I want you to know, everything is possible for the one who believes. And here's what the boy's father says back to Jesus, verse 24. Jesus, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. <laughs> Jesus, I believe the best I know how, but help me, help me overcome my, my unbelief because I don't fully understand who you are or what's going on here. I, I don't understand why my, my boy keeps throwing himself through this demon into fire and water. I, I don't know why they're torturing my son. Jesus, I, I, I'm not even sure all the intricacies of who you are. I, I, don't, I don't know all the doctrine. I don't know all the theology of who you are, God with skin on. All I know is I'm scared and I'm desperate and I'm broken. Help me. Help me overcome my unbelief. Aren't those great words? Doesn't know everything. Still has lots of questions, but Jesus, help me overcome my doubts. Help me overcome my uncertainties. That's the place that's, that's that broken, humbled, desperate place 
where Jesus patiently meets doubters. It's, it's when I recognize I, I don't have all the answers, but I don't need all the answers. Jesus, here's what I know. I'm broken, I'm humble, I'm desperate, um, and, and I need you to meet me. Patiently, Jesus responds to people in, in that situation. I have good news. Matter of fact, I have the best news ever for each of you here today. Jesus will meet you too. Did you know that? Jesus will meet you right there in the valley of the shadow of doubt with patience, with kindness. And as you cry out, Jesus, Jesus, I, I, don't, I don't understand it all, but help me with my unbelief. Jesus says, I'll help you right in that situation with your doubts, with your uncertainties, and I'll meet you right where you're at today. And can I tell you? He'll meet you right where you are today as well. Would you pray with me right now? Lord, thank you for being the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the same patience and kindness that you showed Thomas, you still show to people who are struggling with doubts and uncertainty today, 2020. So, Lord, I praise you that uh, you will meet us and that you will uh, indeed be patient and loving. So, as we say to you right now, Jesus, uh, help us in our unbelief. We know that you're still in the business of helping people struggling with doubts and questions. So right now, we just say, Jesus, you're our Lord and our God. We repeat those words that Thomas said. We don't understand or even like the situation and the circumstances we're facing right now, but we come running to you. (laughs) There's no other place to turn to. So we run and we cry out to you. Here's the great news. Here's the best news ever. You ready? Jesus Christ left the glory and splendor of heaven and took on human form for you. Jesus Christ, therefore, uniquely qualifies to be the sinless Lamb of God. Jesus alone qualified to take our place. Therefore, He was willing to shed His blood for my greatest problem and yours. We're sinners. (laughs) Jesus took our place in the grave, stone cold dead. Early Sunday morning, Jesus victoriously arose, defeating sin and Satan and death. He did that for you. He did that for me. Those are the facts. Right now, Jesus, I believe. I believe those facts. And right now, I believe you are my Lord and my God, and I open the door of my life And I receive you, Lord, as my king, as my God. And I'd encourage you right now, would you just say, or or if you're with people, maybe whisper at Jesus, you're my Lord and you're my God. And I love the fact that Jesus will patiently, lovingly meet you right now as you express belief in Him. Help me with my unbelief. I don't have all the questions answered, but Jesus, what I know, I believe. And out of desperation, humility, I believe. I open the door of my life and invite you in. Lord, would you watch over all of those who are watching right now, who are right now in in doubt and struggling and confusion, Lord, would you meet each of them right now in their valley of the shadow of doubt? Start a a brand new work in their lives, Jesus. And Lord, would you watch over each person watching this? For those who have already said yes to you and are followers, Lord, would you help us even in our doubts and our struggles as well? Help us to shine bright. Help us, Lord, to know who to move towards and text and and FaceTime 
and call and reach out to during these uncertain and troubling days. And Lord, I pray as well for those who need your healing touch. Because Lord, you're our creator, you're our sustainer, and you are the great physician. So Lord, those who uh, are afflicted with this virus, those who are struggling in some other way uh, with, with their health, Lord, I'm asking for healing and grace. And Lord, I pray they'd sense your presence and your love and your goodness raining down on them even right now. Thank you, Lord, for loving us, especially as we travel through the valley of the shadow of doubt. Thank you for your book. It shows us how you treat folks in that valley and you love them and you're patient with them. Thank you for loving and being patient with us. We love you. We're grateful to be your children and I'm grateful for those who perhaps just confessed that they want you to be their God, to be their Lord and King. Start a great work and Lord, help us to Help them continue that work as it begins. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer, I'd like to invite you right now to go to walloonchurch.com and several ways you can contact us. There's a prayer place, prayer request. Well, we'd love to be praying for you. If you prayed that prayer, declare Jesus as your Lord and your God. And if you'll contact us, we'll get you a Bible. We'll get you some material to get you started in your journey with Jesus. Again, walloonchurch.com. Uh, we're praying for you. Love each and every one of you. Miss being with you face to face. Please know we're here for you. Lord bless you. See you tomorrow. And every day during this next week, we'll be uh, reaching out to you on Facebook, on our website, and YouTube as well. Lord bless you. Till the next time.